Hello, tired parents. It's December 8th, 2017, and this is Ask Susanna. I got lots of questions this week, in particular about newborns, so let's jump in. Natalie Turlings writes, I have a 3.5 month old who is just starting to put herself to sleep. She sleeps 11 to 12 hours at night. I know, I'm lucky, and I'm a bit afraid of the four month sleep progression. But my question has to do with naps. She will usually have one long nap, two to two and a half hours, and the rest will only be 45 minute naps. How do I even out her naps? That long nap is usually the first or second nap. She takes four, but I think is almost ready to transition to three. How do I lengthen her other naps? Do I shorten the two and a half hour one, or it's hard to make it through the rest of the day with the short naps. Will this just happen organically? Well, first of all, I encourage you to check out the Wonder Weeks. Um, when you're talk, uh, because they have a really great insight into sleep regressions, which is a bit of a misnomer, because um, sleep regressions coincide with developmental leaps, and I find that if you know, you know that a leap is coming, that you can kind of prepare yourself for it, and it doesn't feel as bad as when it kind of blindsides you. So check out Wonder Weeks. Uh, they've got an app that I really like. Um, now for the, her naps, I don't normally recommend capping naps because I think that everybody needs more sleep, but it is necessary sometimes. And in your case, I'd think for a baby her age, two hour nap is about as long as you want to go. So I would encourage you to gently wake her up around two hours. Um, but more importantly, I want you to look into timing her naps properly. So you want to keep um, a really close eye on her. Uh, throughout the day looking for any kinds of tired signs and take those as cues to start um, shifting her towards her bedtime or start urging her towards a nap the moment you see the the, um, the tired sig tired signal and as for uh, and when you do that then you'll start to see that her sleep rhythm will start to pick up um, a little bit more predictably and th along with a predictable sleep rhythm, you should start to see naps lengthening a little bit. Uh, as for dropping her nap, she'll let you know when she's ready to drop that nap because she will just refuse it. Um, and when that starts to happen, you're going to compensate for the dropped nap by shifting her next sleep a little bit earlier. And again, take a look for those tired cues. Um, I'm gonna post a, um, a note on my Facebook page that lists some of the tired cues that you can look for so that you know what you're looking for. Um, yeah, and, and watch her like a hawk during this time while you're trying to sort out her naps. Um, you're going to want to aim eventually towards a schedule of three naps in the day, as I think you already know. And the first two naps will be a little bit longer, an hour and a half or to two hours. And the third nap tends to be a little bit shorter, kind of a half hour, 45 minute cat nap. Um, uh, this is the goal for babies who are about four to five months old. So you are just ahead of this kind of a sleep schedule and you are well set up to kind of aim towards it with your, with your daughter. Um, if she wakes up from her nap early, then you want to respond to her immediately. Um, you can even respond before she's fully awake. So as soon as she starts to um, shuffle, then try to soothe her back to sleep by rubbing her back or um, shushing her or just keep things gentle and calm. You want to try to coax her to go down for another sleep cycle. And given that she can sleep in such large chunks at night, that indicates to me that she is able to go back to sleep after a sleep cycle. So if you are there to encourage her to go back down at naps, that should help lengthen the naps. Um, and then it can take a couple of weeks for for things to even out in nap time, so be patient while you're doing this. Um, the next newborn question comes from Signe fin Finbogasen, pardon me if I mispronounce your name, um, about your four-month-old who wakes up to nurse throughout the night, but then gets up around five to play for an hour or so, and then wants to go back to sleep. Can you make these early morning wake-ups stop? More daytime sleep, less usually down for sleep around 7.30 p.m. for the night. I think I, um, I think I addressed this a little bit in the comments, but um, 
um, it's difficult to say whether or not you should give you should encourage more sleep or less sleep. Typically more sleep is the answer but without knowing how much sleep your baby is getting overall in a 24-hour period it's um, it's impossible for me to say. So I would encourage you to keep track of your baby's sleep for the next couple of days and compare it to the National Sleep Foundation's recommended averages. And for a newborn or a baby around your child's age, it's about 14 to 17 hours in a 24 hour period. And it's my personal opinion that these averages are on the low side, um, again, because I think everybody needs more sleep than we think. Um, and uh, keep in mind that when we are underslept, when we're overtired, then we get an excess of cortisol in our body, which is a very stimulating hormone, it makes it difficult to sleep, and it's responsible for early rising. And I would actually interpret this 5 a.m. wake up as your child's wake up time, um, and then falling back asleep an hour later is the first nap, because babies around four months old and younger tend to wake up in the morning and then their first wake cycle is about an hour long before they go back down to sleep so that sounds like it fits um, so so you're going to want to avoid um, this excess cortisol by ensuring your child's getting enough sleep and then don't reinforce the wake ups um, and the best way to do this with a little tiny child is to avoid having any lights come on at that time so um, you can still respond to your child, you can still nurse, you can still play, but do a very, actually, <laughs> um, I'd say be, allow your child to play, but don't really give energy back that way. And so you're going to sort of discourage um, energetic play, but you can be present with your child while um, uh, she's awake or he's awake, I don't know that you mentioned, oh he, pardon me, um, so yeah, don't, don't reinforce the wake ups, you can also try to urge him to stay asleep by, when you visit him at 5am, keep your eyes closed and hold him and cuddle him and, and really show him that it's still night time, it's not time to get up, and eventually that will help shift his circadian rhythm, and then when he wakes up around 6 with your toddler, then flip on all the lights, turn on some music on the radio, do something to really indicate there's a change in the house. Now it's morning time. Now it's a time to be awake. And again, be patient. It can take a couple of weeks for the circadian rhythm to catch up in a, in a new pattern. And finally, um, Alicia Allnut says that her three-month-old sleeps for great stretches at night but doesn't go down until 11.30 p.m. to 1 a.m. Um, she's up for the day between 10.30 to 11, which I guess is nice, but how do I get to get her to bed earlier? Also, when can I start sleep training? Um, I'm either nursing or bouncing her to sleep at the moment. Her naps are pretty good. Her awake time is 90 minutes, almost on the dot. And she naps between 30 minutes up to 90. So around 3 to 4 naps a day. Her last nap is usually 8.30 p.m. She's awake, uh, pretty awake after that for a while, longer than 90 minutes at that point. So my first question for you, um, Alicia, or Alicia, is uh, what are your goals for your child's sleep? Um, you seem to like her waking up at 10:30 and 11 or to 11, which is which is fine if that's what you'd want um, her sleep cycle to be. But keep in mind that babies don't really sleep much more than 12 hours at night. So um, right now, if you're averaging at midnight falling asleep and waking up at 10:30, 11, I mean that's under 12 hours, but it's kind of in the ballpark. Um, it seems to me like her whole sleep schedule is sort of her whole circadian rhythm is sort of pushed a little bit late. So um, there's a couple of things that I'm going to recommend. One is to try to get her circadian rhythm into a more uh, normal pattern. So I would encourage you to... Um, mm, well, it's a little tricky to say how you could get that done, but the first thing, <laughs> without, without really hashing it out with you and working through what your goals are and everything, um, the, the first thing I'm going to suggest is the same I suggested to the first person here, um, to Natalie, which is to really na nail the timing of her naps. And again, you're going to want to look for those sleep cues to do that. I'll t again take a look at the notes I'm going to post to the Facebook, my Facebook page. Um, it's great that she's sleeping for good stretches of time at night. That means that she's able to get herself back to sleep after a sleep cycle ends. Um, but your overall hours of sleep, based on my estimation, is about 
14 to 15 hours, which is on the low end of the National Sleep Foundation's recommended hours per 24 hours. Um, and this can create late bedtimes because of the excess of cortisol, like I mentioned earlier. Um, now for all three of you and for anyone else who has a newborn, um, I want you to keep in mind that around three months old, newborn sleep starts to change dramatically. And this is because their bodies begin to develop a circadian rhythm, which is the natural 24-hour biological clock that regulates sleep as well as other uh, functions. Um, and this is because their brains start to produce melatonin and it can complicate sleep a little bit. So it becomes even more important as your child starts to uh, enter the baby phase out of the newborn phase to really nail the timing of naps, really look for those sleep cues, and uh, try to ensure that your child is getting as much sleep as possible. Um, that's it for this week's Ask Susanna. I look forward to hearing all your questions next week. Have a great weekend.